Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It's Monday, March the 29th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. I'm so glad that you could join me this morning. We're continuing to work through the par parables of Jesus in the New Testament. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the parable of the two sons. And if you've got a Bible with you, if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 21, reading from verses 28 to 32. So Jesus said, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to his other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two sons did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way to righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. So when we look at this, uh, this parable, Jesus had made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and um, in this setting, Jesus was speaking to the chief priests and the elders of the Jews. And those elders and chief priests had put it in their minds to try and discredit Jesus any way that they could. And they were searching for a way to get rid of him. And uh, Jesus tells this story about the father and the two sons. Now, upon reading it, uh, the first thing that can be said about this parable is that um, the father most certainly did have the right to ask his sons to help him. Um, as part of any family, there are responsibilities that need to be taken care of. And although their sons may have wished that dad uh, would just leave them alone, he didn't. And he asked them to work. Um, there was work to be done in the father's vineyard. And the two boys were fully capable of working in it. And it was good. And it was right that they should help their dad when he asked them. So the father didn't approach the two boys uh, together as a unit. He approached them individually. And even he, though he asked the same of them, the call to work was individual. So God is like this father and and. To us, although we are part of the collective church of Jesus Christ, he has individual work for us to do. And he approaches us individually to ask us to participate with him. And some people have come to treat their church life um, as something to attend as a spectator, where they assume that someone else can do the work that needs to be done and they just need to show up. But... Each of us is a child of the Father. And God asks each individual believer to work for him in tending his vineyard. Um, we can have different responses to that. In the true church of Christ, which is the family of God, um, there are, in fact, are no spectators. As his children, God asks each of us to be involved in his work. And not only is this a reasonable request it is right of our father to ask this of us now in this particular parable the first son that the father approached was asked to go into the vineyard to work the fact that he was the son of the father should have made him understand the responsibility that he had for the family and he should have gone willingly and, and gladly but we see that this particular son had different plans to attend to that he wanted to attend to. Well, maybe it was his friends. His friends had asked him to go and do something else um, and hang out with them. Maybe, maybe he wanted to go fishing or he wanted to go golfing. Maybe he wanted to go and tend to his own business and make some money. Um, maybe he just wanted to retire on the beach and sip a cold drink 
in his lawn chair. Well, maybe he knew the kind of work that his father was asking of him that particular time on that particular day. And he hated that kind of work which needed to be done. There's many different reasons why this son refused to go. At any rate, the father was asking him to work, not to play. And when his father asked him to help in the family business, uh, the son, the first son recoiled at the thought of the work he'd have to do and immediately he declined and refused to go. But after declining to help, the conscience of the first son got the best of him and he felt ashamed for the way that he refused his father. And uh, then he went and rather than stay in a state of disobedience, he obeyed his dad and went into the vineyard and worked. Well, now Jesus talks about a second son. And the second son that the father approached was asked to work in the vineyard in the same way as his brother. He's, he's given this task to go and work. Immediately the son says, Yes, father, I will go. He even called his father sir, if you notice in the parable. Very respectful. But after saying this, the son changed his mind and he decided not to go to work for his father in the way that his father had asked. Well, when you look at this particular son, you can kind of equate it to be people that are churchgoers. Um, they imitate the second son. Uh, they admit that the word of God is true. They intend to get serious about it someday. Uh, they talk about going to work for the Father. And they keep up the external appearance of religion, but their heart is far from God, much like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the, the, the priests that were trying to marginalize Jesus. Um, they had a form of godliness, but no power. They think that words and promises are enough. Spurgeon once said of the second son, he said this, The second son said, I go, sir, but he went not. And these people do not go. They talk of repenting, but they do not repent. They speak of believing, but they never believe. They think of submitting to God, but they have not submitted themselves to him yet. They say, it is time they broke up the follow ground and sought the Lord, but they do not seek him. It all ends in a mere promise. The point of this parable is clear. What matters is living for God, not saying the right words. All of us have a calling to work for God in his vineyard. And each of us has a decision to make when he asks us. We each have gifts to contribute to the jobs at hand. It's not a spectator sport. The Father individually, selectively, asks us to work for him and contribute to the family effort. Of important note, in, in Jesus' day, the religious leaders who claimed to know God and claimed to be his children were in fact disobedient. And uh, they were good at talking religious talk. But their stubbornly unrepentant hearts showed them to be unwilling to be obedient to the Father when it came down to going into the vineyard to work. Jesus actually told them that repentant sinners, such as the prostitutes and tax collectors, those kind of people who had repented and had come, would enter the kingdom before them. There's a lot of thinking to do in this parable. I pray that God would reveal to you what it is that you need to do with this material. God bless. I hope you have a wonderful day. This is Food for Thought.